I'm Scott Allen Miller, it's the 11th of October 2022, and this is my vlog of daily life in Central America. Today, we are getting on the bus early this morning. I'm actually filming this tomorrow in San Jose, Costa Rica. Uh, so all the scenery you are seeing behind me is Costa Rica. We are getting on the bus early this morning and heading from Leon, Nicaragua to San Jose, Costa Rica. Obviously, we arrived because here we are filming. So our day started really early. We were up about five o'clock this morning, uh, out the door at about 5.45 in our taxi. It only takes maybe 10 minutes to get over to the Nika Expresso station in Leon. The bus comes in from Chinandega and uh, then Leon is its first stop. Oh, Lando puppy. And uh, uh, oh, we came by this last night. I wanna show this. This is like a coffee place, like a coffee bar or something really fancy. We saw it here on the circle last night. And uh, we're going left here. So we're heading to breakfast as I record this. So the bus comes in from Chinandega, so we're the first stop in Leon, so it's it's really easy. It, it can't be all that late, varies by a few minutes. So we actually got there just after 6. 6.30 is the scheduled time for pickup, and it got there about 6.45. So we had a lot of just sitting around waiting, not a big deal because we have our luggage and it's a quiet little street. You can just sit there. Uh, got picked up at 6.45, and this is my first time ever doing a, a distance on a really large bus. This is like a, like a Greyhound style bus in the United States, like a big, big uh, bus, big comfy seats. Uh, luggage goes underneath. It's $35 from Leon to San Jose. And uh, you have overhead. So like if you have backpacks, you can put it up there. You have a decent amount of space around you. And with the luggage underneath, like it's, it's really convenient. And the seats were really comfortable. All of that was great. Um, you do not open the windows. It's the big tinted windows. And then in theory, air conditioning. We did fine for about our first hour before we realized the air conditioning was broken on this particular bus. And this became the story of our day, grabbing this mural here as we come by, that it didn't take too long before we went from really comfortable early morning temperatures with hardly anyone on the bus. This is a cool thing I'm coming past right here. Got to grab this as we walk by. And, uh, oh, I think this is a chain. We saw these in Guatemala as well. This is really cool. Hope this comes out on the video. Like really interesting. And just crossing a street here, so. Turn around. Oh, bit of traffic. Okay, they're waiting for us. And so by the time we got halfway to Managua, the temperatures were getting really high and started climbing into the 30s, which is really rough when you're trapped on a bus all day that you are going to not want to be getting hot and sweaty. And normally when we take buses around Nicaragua, it's the mini bus or the chicken bus, and there's lots of wind, and they have windows open, and even though the air temperature might be high, say 28, 29 degrees, it's just whip whipping past you and it doesn't really bother you. So I've never taken a bus that was so warm that it was really a problem. This is a gorgeous house, wow. Uh, but this, this was extreme. By the time we were in Managua, we were above 30 degrees. And uh, by the time we were getting into around Rivas, we were above 34. And at our peak, we were at 37, which is more than 100 degrees Fahrenheit with no air movement or essentially no air movement. It was really sickeningly hot. Uh, very, very tough to deal with that. So it, if we'd had working air conditioning, it would have been a really comfortable day, but without it, it was a really tough ride where we were all starting to feel quite sick and uh, we're considering things like getting over the border and grabbing an Uber to take us to San Jose because it was it was that bad, right? Um, Dominica actually wrote some emails to the bus company is like, what are you gonna do about this? They actually sent out an AC repair crew to meet the bus on the road uh, because it was that bad. Unfortunately, they were not able to repair it. So we stopped for a little bit and they aired out the bus that brought it down a couple degrees, uh, bought us a little bit of time. This is a university I think that we're walking past. Yeah, interesting. But uh, that was not enough to make any significant 
difference. They then tried stopping at a restaurant to give us a chance to cool down and get some fluids, but uh, no, no, no. Give me money. Give me food. And uh, aha, this is where we're going. So we're gonna catch back up with you later. I'm gonna have a hard time stitching together today's story because I've had to jump back and forth in different days and had a lot of interruptions. But needless to say, the bus ride was hot at over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. It was making us actually sick and we didn't know what we were gonna do by the end. But we stopped at this restaurant with a view of the ocean about three hours from our final destination here in San Jose. And that allowed us to cool off a little bit. We got some cool liquids. Um, the bus cooled down just a little bit, got back in. And of course, by that time it was getting to be night. So it, once it started cooling off, there was some of amount of progress and just keeping the temperature bearable and uh, we were able to continue the ride for the rest of the day but given that it was so cool outside anytime we stopped you could go outside and it was perfectly comfortable like you didn't need fans you didn't need air conditioning you didn't need anything and okay I'm gonna cross this street dangerously there's no light I'm just la 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 um other people did it, it must be safe and uh that was a big this is a big building I wish I knew what this was There's something interesting here uh, I'm gonna spin you around. I know, I know, I hate the, all the spinning around, but there's so much to see in the city because I'm getting more and more towards downtown San Jose, and it's really interesting. I'm walking by this giant building, this huge sidewalk. Este. This is, it's, it's always hard to imagine what a city is going to be, to look and feel like before you get there. Like, you can compare it to other cities you've been to in the past, but every city is unique as well. And uh, certainly, I feel elements of Guatemala City, I feel elements of American cities, I feel elements of Nicaragua, and of course Costa Rica has its own flair as well. But, oh, this is the hospital that I'm walking past. Okay, cool. Uh, but certainly, you feel lots of different pieces in San Jose, and definitely a unique mix as well. Every city has its own way of blending things together, of course. So. Uh, once we continued on, the bus ride was not too bad as it started to cool down. One of the things that sucks is though, it was so cool outside, it was so nice, and to be on the bus drenched in sweat, like, my t-shirt had sweat stains halfway down the front because I was sweating continuously for so long, and there was just no need had there been proper air conditioning or windows that opened. Uh, always, always such a challenge. But, uh... Once we got the real, the really interesting part is once we got to San Jose, we got to the bus terminal. The bus terminal itself was really nice. So if you pull in, we're like, oh, this is great. And uh, Paul had told us, make sure you don't get a taxi because they, they charge you way too much. Get an Uber. It's nice and easy. And so we ordered an Uber as soon as we got off the bus. Uh, and then we, you go through a turnstile and it's one way, but it doesn't exactly stop you from going back. So it's not... It's not very secure. I'm not really sure of the purpose of the turnstile. And uh, I'm going to wait here for a minute for traffic. Um, although, yeah, it just turned green, so i got to wait. Um, and uh, we went through the turnstile and realized that where the bus dropped us off was nice and quiet, and there were hardly any people. But once you got to the other side, the bus station or terminal was absolutely jam-packed with people who didn't seem to have any purpose for being there which is very concerning. Um, it's not like it didn't have a feeling of people waiting for a bus or people on their way somewhere. It seemed like the bus terminal was just a place where people were camped out and there was very little security. Um, and it was actually difficult to walk through it. So it was very dangerous. Um, not that you were gonna get stabbed in the bus terminal, but very dangerous from a, someone could pick your pockets, someone could, sorry, other people are crossing, I'm gonna cross. Um, <clears throat> Uh, someone could, you know, grab your backpack or whatever. So we had to be really careful and manage the girls and all of our stuff very carefully as we went through the terminal. And that was not a good feeling. And then there was nowhere to go to get to the Uber. There's a taxi pickup area, which of course is super sketchy. First of all, taxis are just a super sketchy concept. Um, and then the controlled taxi area was really sketchy and there weren't taxis available in it so it didn't have the intended design by any stretch and and we didn't have any clear way to exit the terminal to get to an uber and so we waited and we tried to tell the uber where to pick us up 
and he couldn't figure it out so he went to a gas station and said to meet him at a gas station but outside the barrier of the terminal was a mob scene literally a mob pressed up against the fences and it made no sense and and it was very very scary and needed a lot of police and it didn't have them and it was clear that this was a tent city like literally streets covered in tents homeless everywhere um crowds of people who had no business being there just hanging out around the terminal um harassing anyone coming in or out of the terminal it was seriously scary uh we had to very carefully push our way through this dangerous group and there was so much traffic on the street going around okay i have to point out these are train tracks coming through the city san jose is one of the very few places in northern latin america that has operating trains it is the only one in central america with them so it's really cool uh so the but I don't know where they go or how to use them. But I do know that there are a number of stations through the middle of the city. And if we're lucky, maybe we'll see a, a train come by while we're walking. But I doubt it. But they do exist. And uh, this is a neat area. This is a hotel and uh, a steakhouse and something on the corner that I can't see. Um, yeah, I really can't read it. Um, so this was really, really scary. And we worked our way to the gas station. And then the Uber left the gas station and said he went to the train station to pick us up after we said we would meet him at the gas station at his request so we told him we were at the gas station and he charged us for the ride and canceled the ride so somehow he was able to cancel and charge i don't even know how uber allows that to happen it was we were where he wanted us to pick him up he never went there and just canceled the ride so we ordered a couple more ubers the next one canceled within seconds and then the next one showed up made eye contact with us at the gas station we were standing at a gas station all he had to do was pull in and pick us up he looked right at us we waved he looked and then decided to drive on and didn't pick us up just left us there so this this really highlights how dangerous this is that you can't get a ride reliably uh, uber is doing nothing to protect people looking for a ride um, and Apparently, there's very little attraction from the Uber drivers to actually pick people up. And uh, the taxis are supposed to be really, really dangerous um, and, and super expensive, like charging $30 when it should be three, like, like a thousand percent the appropriate prices. There's very little you can do about it. And this is interesting that there's this old wooden house in the middle of the city. Like it's a big house, but it looks like something that should be in a rundown town in upstate New York. It really does not fit here at all. It's weird. Uh, and, and this was an incredibly dangerous area. Quite honestly, this was the single most dangerous street location that I've been at in a city that I can remember in my lifetime. I lived in New York City for quite some time. I've been to nearly every major super dangerous city in the United States of at least some point. I lived in downtown Newark, New Jersey. Lived downtown Newark. Uh, I've lived in Dallas, which is not the most dangerous, but it has really dangerous areas. I have been all over the world. I live in Nicaragua. I used to live in Panama. Like I have had a lot of time in a lot of different cities in a lot of different regions, nothing nothing has ever come close to how concerned I was about the safety in in San Jose at the bus terminal where they send tourists as they're coming in from outside the country that as tourists you're expected to show up have no local resources get dropped off in the most unpoliced dangerous packed to capacity uh, shanty slash tent city this was a Hoover town, Hooverville, sorry, in, in the middle of San Jose. And, and you're supposed to figure out what to do once you're there. And, and you're trapped outside the gates once you, once you leave. And I actually got hit by a car. That sounds terrible. I was pushed out of the way by a car because a crowd of people would not let me pass and the car wanted to go. So it just pushed into its luggage and pushed me into the crowd of people to keep going. And that's just how you do it there, apparently. And no one thought anything of it. And it wasn't like I got hurt or anything. And it wasn't like he was going fast. And it wasn't like if I fell over, he was going to run me over. But that's, that's what it was like. And this is the welcome to Costa Rica 
location. This is the official spot for buses to bring people into Costa Rica. It's an interesting decision from the government to make that the first and potentially last impression you have of the city dealing with that kind of, of thing. Now, people coming into the airport can avoid that, but a lot of people don't come into the airport for a lot of reasons or get to their airport via the bus. So this is a cool intersection. I think that's a house maybe. That is such a gorgeous, like the trees and the spiral staircase there, really neat. And uh, this whole area right here is pretty cool. Now I'm heading across. And I don't know why there's a guy with an umbrella yelling in the street. I'm just waiting for traffic to let me go. And they wave me across. Oh, this is a pretty little spot. This feels very European around here. And uh, so we were, we were seriously worried uh, being there and having the kids and having our luggage. Like that was completely, oh, what a cute place. Yeah, oh, I love this. And, uh, oh, we are going to cross here in just a second. Uh, it, was, it was absolutely terrifying. Um, and Dominica said she would never, between the bus and where it dropped us off, between the bus and the bus terminal, she said she would absolutely never consider coming to San Jose ever again that alone and that is just shocks me that costa rica would make such an important entry point into the country be something that would create such a reaction that i mean she was ready to leave right then right if we had access to a car to leave the city that would have been it right then and that would have been the end of any tourism money that potentially costa rica could have made from that interaction like that's weird so that was a wild and scary experience and it's hard to really say just how scary it was because it was if i'm scared a lot of people who watch my channel know and right now you know i'm walking around san jose which is the number one mugging city on planet earth and i'm not really all that concerned about it i'm a little bit concerned to be fair i am looking around and being super vigilant of every person who gets anywhere near me because i know what this city is like but like, I'm not super concerned, and I'm walking around Nicaragua, and everyone's like, dude, you're so dangerous. You need to really watch yourself. This is some scary stuff that you do. I cannot believe how awesome some of these houses are, by the way. Just, and I knew that there's some of this, like, architecture like this. San Jose is actually famous for this stuff. I mean, it would be, right? Just look at it. But with, uh, with my track record of willingness to do really, really seen as dangerous things, going to places that... I don't know, carrying a camera in the street, walking alone, uh, doing so in the middle of the night. Like, yes, in general, my bar for what I consider dangerous is pretty high. You have to really, ooh, my gosh, so, so cute. And I have to reiterate, it is drizzling and it's a little bit on the cool side, like 22 degrees maybe. Uh, those cool blue lights in that garage. These houses, the Hemingway Inn, my gosh, so cool. Um, so when I'm showing some of this stuff, some of these doorways, some of these buildings, this is, this really feels like London or maybe a little bit warmer than London, but not much. This is very London-y. This is gorgeous, gorgeous in a, you can't believe it's Central America kind of way. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm legit loving these neighborhoods that we're in down here. And like, look at this October 6 little place. Wow. Now keep in mind, this is a much, much more expensive city than we normally see in Central America. So this is, this is at the top of the market. It's up there with Panama City. It's not quite Panama City, but it's up there, but it's a bigger city than Panama City. And uh, I really don't know where I'm going. I need to check a map pretty soon. The, uh, so, so when my bar is so high, it's, it's not a point of, I don't have a good perspective on safety. It's just, you have to understand my scale. I find almost nothing dangerous. I tend to be very brave. And that I say, this is the most dangerous of all the places. Look at this. I hope that turns out that you can see it. Everything looks like it's a little bit fuzzy on the video because of the rain or the humidity. So I'm hoping that this turns out well and you guys can get into it on the 4K projection 
when you put it on your TVs. That's the way to watch. I hope all of you watch the show in the morning with your coffee on a big 4K TV. That is the way to do it. That, that's how it's meant to be done. That's why I put in, that's a strip club, just you know, in the middle of this. And, uh, you know, I record this on high quality equipment and do a whole bunch of high quality rendering that takes a lot, a lot of work so that you can watch this on big screens and really get a feel for the places. So I'm putting in the effort. You can watch it on a big TV. There you go. Um, when my bar is so high and my scale, when I say this is the most dangerous, I mean it, or the, the scariest spot that I've been in, I really mean it. I've been in the Docklands of London. I have been in, in Newark, New Jersey on foot going all over. I've walked some pretty crazy dangerous cities in my time and just the terminal tonight takes the cake. Um, luckily the area was not very big, but it was a lot of people who were very aggressive and uh, once we got out to it and got to the gas station, right, we were in a vi very visible spot. It was hard to come at us quickly because traffic would hit you. Uh, the gas station itself had security. Um, there were a few people there working at the gas station. So that made everything much, much better. But uh, that was really necessary. And then we were stuck there for a long time and had no idea if we were going to be able to get a ride. And the only reason we were able to get a ride eventually is that the guy who worked at the gas station came out and said, oh, you need, you need a ride. And we're like, yeah, well, we've done this and done this and done that. And this is what we're doing currently. And he's like, well, this car parked here. It's an Uber driver who's in the bathroom and uh, I'll get him for you when he comes out. And we're like, oh, well, that seems sketchy, but uh, if, if we can't find anything else, we'll, we'll do that. And then by the time everybody canceled on us, he came out of the bathroom and we're like, okay. And he was really nice and took us all the way to our, our hostel for $3 and uh, actually set it up. Uh, he did not do it through Uber. Uber, Uber was a hundred percent, well, Uber was a hundred percent fail in this city. And we have not yet been able to use them a single time. So I have no idea if it ever works. Paul says it has worked for him and he didn't have any problems, but it did not work at all for us. And, uh, uh, but just a nice guy at a gas station took us for $3 over to, <laughs> our hotel and luckily we had a little bit of money on us uh or we'd have been i mean we, he would have taken us dollars i'm sure but we don't normally have that on us either so it's always a challenge coming from nicaragua but uh, got to our hostel and our hostel our chill out hostel in uh escalante is really nice the girls really like it uh they say that they want to stay here in the future when we come back to san jose dominica immediately was like i'm never ever setting foot in san jose again and i'm going to avoid costa rica if i can at any chance but the girls really like the hostel um, and by the time I'm recording this tomorrow we, obviously I'm walking around in the daytime uh, Luchana is already like we want to stay in this hostel when we return to San Jose because they're liking the food they like the weather uh, they're enjoying how chill it is they're like we don't want to do that bus we don't want to go to the train to this I'm sorry the the bus terminal but when we get a car then we want to we want to come back here and, and spend time here because this is this is pretty cool and they like exploring the city and and Luchana always likes a very urban lifestyle. So this is one of the more urban places, especially one of the more urban places within short driving distance of where we live. Uh, Guatemala City is far more urban for sure. Panama City is more urban, but each of those is dramatically farther away by car uh, or by bus or whatever. Uh, this was about 12 hours, 13 hours. Uh, we estimated it would take 14 and we did a little bit less than 13, I think, on the bus arriving at about 10 o'clock at night uh, when we left at just a little before 7 in the morning. That's, it was just really close to 13 hours, uh, but Guatemala City is more like 22 and uh, Panama is probably more like 28, uh, very much estimating on Panama City. but very long distances this one is so much more accessible and if we do it by car on our own we can probably get that down to about nine hours nine hours of air conditioning and being able to stop anywhere we want along the way uh, not needing to go to the bus terminal not needing to get an uber there's a lot to be said for that i don't really want to drive nine hours on the pan american like there's eh, but it solves a lot of things too so that was our day got into the chill out we um, dropped off the kids. They didn't want to do anything. They just wanted to sit and relax, charge their devices, do what it, watch their shows, whatever. So we got them on the internet. Dominic and I headed straight out and went to 
uh, a restaurant. Actually, we got to the restaurant before 10. So our bus ride must have been 12 hours because we were there before 9.30 at the restaurant. We went to the BHG Bistro and uh, they had a nice mix of Mexican and Vietnamese and some other cuisines. Uh, we got some banh mi, we got some fish tacos, got some cocktails and relaxed for a little while. And actually it dropped to 17 degrees. So when we went out, we're like, we need to be cool. We've been overheated all day. We need to bring our body temperatures down. And then we ended up sitting outside at 17 degrees and we're shivering trying to keep ourselves warm. It was so cold. <laughs> and, uh, and we ordered food for the girls and brought that back to the hotel. They ate dinner and we were off to bed on the early side because we were exhausted. So that was our day of getting from Leon, Nicaragua to San Jose, Costa Rica. The bus ride would have been great if it wasn't for the, the broken air conditioning and they tried, they honestly did. So I try not to be upset with them. I will take the Nika Espresso again. Um, they are, everyone has really good stories with them. Dominica especially cannot handle the lack of air conditioning. So that's a much bigger risk for her. For me, mostly I was just really sweaty. Uh, for her, she was really sick. The girls handled it really well. They are troopers when it comes to long travel. And, uh, uh, <laughs> <Hola>. hey, <laughs> they're laughing at me. <laughs> and, uh, um, uh, so that was not so bad uh, in reality and, and would have been great. With air conditioning, it would have been a fantastic luxury journey. The bus terminal is terrifying and I don't know any way around that yet, but at least now we know to be prepared for that and that makes it a little bit better. Uh, maybe we can have an Uber waiting. We can contact someone ahead of time. We should have gotten a card from the guy last night. And uh, uh, and the hostel we found is really great um, and, and cheap. And now we know a bit more about the city uh, and the things to do. So it was a rough day. Uh, we ended it kind of rough, but once we had some good food cooled down, it was starting to be like, okay, well, the we didn't die in the terminal. We didn't die in of exposure on the bus. And here we are. We'll be exploring over the next few days. Fingers crossed that it works out well. So we'll see, but we've got a couple more days of footage coming from Costa Rica, from San Jose. This is different. Most people will film Costa Rica out on the beaches, in the jungle. We are doing urban Costa Rica for the next few days. And uh, this, is, this is my favorite stuff to do. Unfortunately, it's dark and rainy uh, tomorrow. So I'm gonna be struggling to get footage, I can tell. And our internet in Costa Rica is so slow. I can't even begin to tell you how slow it is compared to Nicaragua. So I'll be doing everything I can to get these things uploaded. But my gosh, it's gonna be a challenge. I will see all of you. Please remember to like and subscribe, leave your comments below. You can support me by buying me a coffee. That helps a lot for being able to do trips like this and getting you more farther afield stuff. Tell your friends about the show, share it on social media, and I will see all of you and hopefully some of your friends tomorrow.